Welcome to Strange Familiars. In a little bit, I will be interviewing Ingrid from Norway, who has a really, really interesting story about this gnome-like creature she's seen several times around her farm. But first, welcome back again, Allison. At the end of the decade. Yeah, so this is, depending when the show releases, this will be our last show of 2019. I'm thinking realistically, this is the first show of 2020. <laughs> first show of 2020, but we're recording it at the end of 2019. So, personally, not been a great year for me. But for the show, it's been a pretty good year for Strange Familiars. This was the year we went weekly. And... We've gotten a lot of new patrons, a lot of new support. So, of course, thank you, patrons, for that. And we've had a lot of really, really good episodes, I think. It's, we decided we were going to try to pick some of our favorites. Yeah, I've wanted to do a classic 80s clip show for ages, and you said, no, it's actually more difficult because we'd have to like m mix together clips. And I was like, well, maybe we could just talk about it. <laughs> a clip show would take a long time. It would, take, it would be a lot harder to do a clip show than it would be to just do a new show. Yeah. So. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, just a nice way to sort of end one year and start another. Yeah, I'm always interested, too, in the feedback. And, like, there's so many times where um, you do an episode or we'll talk about an episode and we'll have a sense that it's one that will be more favorable than others. And then that doesn't necessarily turn out to be the case. Or there'll be ones where you think, like, oh, this one isn't as good as another one, and then that'll be one that really resonates. So right. I think everybody has their favorites, and so I'd be cu curious to see what everybody else thinks are their favorites as well. Yeah, and I do want to mention, you know, as we do these lists, I can't think of any shows that I wouldn't have liked to put on the list. You know, I, Yeah, that couldn't have been subbed for one of the other ones. Yeah, 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 these are just some standouts for me. It doesn't mean I didn't love all the other ones. I, I, I'm very lucky, and I tell people this all the time. I get to do something I love, and I love doing this show, and I'm very, very lucky in that. The yeah. show's growing. We were in the top 50 all time in our category in iTunes, and we're regularly in the top 20 with the shows every week on iTunes, so that's great to see. And we're getting new listeners all the time. And uh, like I said, things with Strange Familiars are, are going great. And I want to thank all the listeners for that. It's just been such a great ride for us. And we will keep bringing you content in 2020 as before. So let's start with our, our little list of, of the 2019 shows. Our yeah. favorites. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to go in descending order? I have probably a favorite or so, but any of the other ones could really sub for any of the other numbers. So. Really go in any order. So we yeah. each chose five. So just just save I... your favorite for last. And I think our favorites might be the same one. Okay. So we'll hang on to that one for last. And then we'll let's talk about the other ones. Okay. I actually picked two Patreon episodes, and that's not to get people who aren't patrons to become one. It's just... Crazy. But you should. <laughs> <laughs> but you would get to two, hear two awesome episodes that were my favorite this year. The first one I wanted to talk about was the airships episode. Yes. So sort of like proto uh, proto UFO flying ship flying machine. Yeah, this is the end of the 1800s, and people were seeing these airships, and we got gathered all these newspaper articles, some of which mentioned names, and we were able to track down that some of these people named in these airships existed with these insane names. Yeah, no. Like, <laughs> the, the, I mean, the one fellow in Boston, like we found his address. Yeah, and it corresponded to, um, like, the job that he actually his occupation in the sense has corresponded nicely to. Yeah, so he yeah. very well could have been a real person, but then there was this fellow, August de Falmouth. I swear to you, I'm going to change my name to August <laughs> de Falmouth one day. I'm going to go with July de Falmouth. <laughs> and I had a very intense dream 
uh, where I met August de Falmouth, which I I related in a in a in another patron episode. Yeah, I think, I think so. Yeah, in in the uh... well, this was a patron episode, so maybe it was all part of the same. Thing no, now. because I, we did two episodes on the secret cipher of the Euphonauts, and I believe I I related. Oh, uh, okay, the August yeah, because it wasn't until after we were like fully in um in research mode for the airships that you started to dream about August. So yeah. Yeah, it was a really, really cool thing for me. It was a really one of my favorite dreams of all time. I think it was just this wonderful, wonderful. Dream. And did that come from a patron episode? <laughs> Your favorite dream of all time, basically. It's one of my favorite dreams of all time. Wow, that and... seems like it would be worth becoming a patron. <laughs> <laughs> so, I did mine in descending order. So okay. I'll, I'll do mine. So, so my number five mm-hmm. was episode one hundred, and a lot of people love that episode. The interview with the Powell Doctor. Your... Oh, yeah, it was kind of the full circle moment where my mom talks about... Yes, your mom, Catherine Deal, interviewed Philip Smith back in the 1970s or very early 80s, I forget now. Late, late 70s. Late yeah. 70s. And she had given us the tape years and years ago, and we were able to transcribe it to digital and put it on the podcast. And people loved it. I mean, people really, really loved that window into that practice and that very genuine you know kind of look into that lost culture mm-hmm. i love what he said like you can tell from the the little bits that you hear about his attempt to getting my mom to try to become a a power a doctor. Yeah. And it, it, it's not gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> still people really loved it and i was worried because i was worried it wouldn't translate i was worried his pennsylvania dutch accent was it's a little very thick. thick yeah it's difficult to to glean what he's saying at times. But people overall just really, really responded to it and just loved episode 100. So it made a great kind of marker for 100. And, of course, Philip Smith opens every show. He does. It's it's his uh, a little quote from Philip Smith that opens every show. So what's your next one? Um, the next one, I'm going to go with uh, The Mysterious Disappearance at Seven Devils, which was another one of like my kind of favorite episodes of ours, which is... Basically, it was a patron episode, sort of a um, a true crime story, not unlike the Jenny Beam saga of a boy who disappears in the Pacific Northwest a little later than Jenny. Yeah. And sort of what happens to your mind to try to cope with that kind of loss. As a, as as a, a mother. As a mother, particularly. Yeah, yeah I, f- I feel like that is maybe more the essence of it than what happened to the little boy Cecil Britton. It's more what happens to his family as a result of his absence. That was episode number 77. So for my number four, not too long ago, episode 130, The Capre, where Ira told about his experience in the Philippines. and I really love this sort of um, site-specific, I mean, not unlike the Pow Wow episode, where you get like an insight into one specific culture that maybe you didn't have any kind of relation to before i really had no idea about um what kind of religion or spiritual beliefs would be in the philippines you could remove the story of the capre the creature completely and it still would have been a fantastic story Mm -hmm. that's the thing that that's really interesting about that when you and when you put the capre story in with the shaman and all the ceremony that went with it Mm -hmm. it just becomes this it, it, like this fully flowering story that was like an alternate princess mononoke <laughs> <laughs> kind of yeah yeah like what happens when you honor the earth as opposed to dishonoring it yeah yeah and it, it was just just super wonderful for strange familiars i mean it, i just was really really taken by the whole thing and i felt very lucky even honored that ira would would bring that story to us it was such a and a, a natural a, a, storyteller he is i mean there's oh, some yeah. guests that just really um have a knack for storytelling. Oh, yeah, he, he really did. He was a great storyteller. Yeah, now I keep thinking of other... Th- oh, I should have put this episode on. There, um, okay, never mind. <laughs> I feel like I want to revise the list already. Um, so what do you have next? Next, I'm going to go with the Bunnymen stories, because that's close to my heart, the Bunnymen, generally. The shout out to um, Echo in Here podcast. <laughs> my friends, Courtney and Shane. Which you appeared on recently? I did appear on episode, I think it was 17, where we talk at length about the myriad ways that the early uh, 80s Liverpool psychedelic new wave scene overlaps and um, even overlaps with some of our stories related to Bill Drummond and the trickster rabbit archetype. And um, 
So what episode? What number? Episode number was the Bunny Man? Uh, that was episode number ninety five. Number ninety five. The Bunny Men took me by surprise because we had done more than the Flannel Men. <laughs> No, nothing. Okay. Yeah, nothing, nothing is as surprising as that. N- nothing surprised me that much anymore. It took me by surprise how much I was taken with the bunny men, because it they, could seem a little silly. And, and they may or may not be overtly paranormal. Now we certainly have some that seem overtly paranormal, where they're showing up in people's houses, like Flannel Man and so mm-hmm. forth. But the story, like the one John told on that episode, where he's just driving down the road and there's a guy in a bunny suit sitting in a chair waving at him. Mm-hmm could absolutely be normal people dressed as rabbits Mm -hmm. but so interesting and so weird and so out of place i just it really i really was taken with that Mm -hmm. and we had done a story for another patron episode i think it was for our 2018 halloween episode Mm -hmm. we did a story about the bunny man from virginia the one that they think might have been the um, inspiration for the Donnie Darko. For Donnie Darko, mm-hmm. yeah. The one that Bunny Man Bridge is named after and so forth. And we're going to do a deeper dive on that because we've gotten more information on that. So mm-hmm. we're going to do a deeper dive on that coming up. But I wasn't super interested in that before. To me, it was just kind of like this. So it was this neat little you know, true story that morphed into this urban legend that, that became larger than life. But it wasn't super interesting to me. It was something I thought, well, we covered it a little bit in that Halloween episode. Mm-hmm. That's that. You know, we, we touched on it. But now I'm very, very interested in light of all these other Bunny Man stories. And it's it's been a little while since we've gotten some Bunny Man stories. And the Flannel Man stories have slowed down, too. So, folks, keep hitting us with those Bunny Man and Flannel Man stories. We, we want to catch them all. So, But, yeah, that was... That really took me by surprise, and, and I've really uh, become super interested in the Bunny Man stories. Well, I mean, you know, in one sense, it seems sort of, you know, potentially, I don't want to say juvenile, but just sort of, just being so out of context, sort of silly. But then when you think about, like, how much rabbits and that idea of either the trickster archetype or the idea of the fertility renewal springtime thing mm-hmm. that plays into rabbits it actually makes much more sense than a man in a flannel shirt does <laughs> or I mean, or even a, a bigfoot really i mean there's a tradition of large anamorphic bunnies yeah. as tricksters that yeah. goes back to you know the celtic puka uh there are pukers i believe in uh, Scandinavia, they called them, which, you know, obviously related. So this is something that's, you know, that's been uh, archetype, I, I suppose, you know. And it, even if, if you, I was just thinking about dissecting rabbits in general, something that doesn't speak, has great ears to listen, and is always kind of watching. Mm-hmm. It really kind of fits the bill as a flannel man in that sense, too. True. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very true. So my number three... Yeah, I'm cheating here. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna go with? This is actually three episodes, but it's one series. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My number. This, th- is, this is like when you do your desert island disc, and you're like, and you want the compilation CDs and like the multi disc sets, so it counts as. Does that count as one? Right, right. So this is one six episodes, one sixteen, one eighteen, and one nineteen. It's the Pandemonium series. Oh yeah, that is a good one. <laughs> I was just really happy I wasn't along for that. I would. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't handle yeah. that kind of stuff. <laughs> it was intense, and it was Chad and I. We spent the night at a ghost town called Pandemonium. Well, there. I mean, have you never watched a movie before? Like, you don't go to a town named Pandemonium and sleep overnight. Well, I mean, that's a thing, and that's kind of why we chose it because uh-huh. there is this notion that these these places get these names for a reason. And that, uh, you know, they talk about how many Bigfoot sightings there are in places with devil names, for instance, uh-huh. and so forth. Things like this. Well, we just talked about that. That, that kid goes missing in seven devils. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, missing people <laughs> all over these, these devil regions and so forth. So that's why we went there. But it was a ghost town, and there were ghost legends. And that's all we were expecting. And what we got there was so much more. At least it seemed so much more. I mean, 
maybe maybe it was all ghosts i i can't say even if it wasn't ghosts and it was people it was, that was to me much scarier the it fact was, that somebody would mess with you in that way it, it was, was is very disturbing intense it was intense and you were literally intense we were i, I, I was intense <laughs> chad was under tarp but oh really he wasn't even in a tent he wasn't even oh, in a shit. tent yeah <laughs> whoever or whatever came into camp and wound that spring into my paracord was looking right at chad when they did it in the dark yeah it's so creepy it's so how creepy. would you've had the sight to be able to see to do it that's the thing I that do, do, yeah it doesn't make yeah, sense it doesn't yeah, make sense it's so creepy the whole thing was creepy okay what's your next one all right then i think my next one is the william of the fiery flowers because i do have a a soft spot for as you do for misfits and that was episode 80 yeah I only didn't choose it because I knew you would. Yeah. So, so I figured it, I knew there was going to be one episode on both of our lists. I thought, well, I'll, I'll leave that off my list because I know you would choose it. Certainly, in my heart, one of my favorite episodes. I mean, it started with this wonderful gift that you gave me, of this postcard, just because you thought I'd like it, that gets shuffled under these papers and forgotten about for most of a summer. And then I happened to have a, a time to do some research and, he, you know, kind of saw it and typed it in, mm -hmm. did some research on him and was blown away, absolutely blown away and started, you know, this whole uh, idea of, of me researching some more people. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I'd like to thank John who gave us some, uh, a hollyhock, which hopefully by next year we can keep going well enough to to get to they are, aren't they black hollyhocks he gave us i think us? so i think Jack yeah black actually hollyhocks. like the other hollyhocks which i brought in just hoping that i could survive i've actually look better now than they did in the summer inside the house so well, maybe i can, can not kill it this time <laughs> like i do with most <laughs> yeah so uh william and the fire flowers episode 80 yeah i think that um we both have a soft spot for um just sort of lost people mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. forgotten history generally and and that, I mean, kind of led into the idea of, of our other podcast, which we will be debuting in 2020, finally, uh, The Long Forgotten Friend, which is kind of, it's going to be that. It's going to be these sort of forgotten people from history, just people we find interesting. and uh, that Or we, stories, even if yeah. the people aren't entirely forgotten, if a particular story of theirs is. Yeah, exactly. All right, so my number two, again, I'm cheating. Mm -hmm. It's episodes 63 and 64. It's a two-parter. It was a witch or a Sasquatch. I was with Alex and Colin, and they told this intense story of their experience, and we got it. They were separated in the night, and we, we got Alex's version of the story, and then we got Colin's version of the story. And so intense and such a neat, neat story. Uh, and I think it's been a, a fan favorite for sure. Yeah, I always, I always think those stories are interesting and in that they do bolster the narrative, you know, by having, not that you have to have some sort of witness to your paranormal experience, but it certainly does make it more yeah. believable if there's someone else experiencing it at the same time. And then also just like um, the subtleties of memory and what things stand out between one person and another when they're experiencing it, or if you're experiencing the same thing, are you ever truly experiencing the same thing? Right, right. And I mean that was a direct quote, uh, I believe, from Colin, who said, "Who said, as he's lost and these, he's hearing these weird sounds and these things are happening, and he can't get back to to Alex. He's he, he was is it a witch or a Sasquatch? Which is such a powerful statement, like what was happening, mm -hmm. uh, and and ties in so well with both Strange Familiars and the book that I'm writing with Josh. The well, two volume books I'm writing with Josh, where the footprints end." It's just wonderful. And then we come to our... Favorite episode. This is both of our favorite episodes for the year. I think it was an episode that really uh, shocked a lot of people. It did, and the comments have been wonderful. This was episode I, 131. 131, a monastic view of the other with Brother Richard. He deserves his own podcast, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have him on every episode if I could. It was... Uh, stunning to me really settled me in a lot of ways the mm -hmm. it, patrons got to hear a recent episode uh the solstice walk episode where chad and i went at night back to white rocks trail and hiked it at night which by the way quite a challenging hike 
that's basically climbing over boulders and it's even worse on the way back down I had to really watch myself so i didn't mm-hmm. trip and at night yeah it was mm-hmm. it was very very challenging it's challenging during the day but at night it was really really challenging but after talking to brother richard really i had a, a whole attitude adjustment in regards to the other and i was so much more calm being out there and was able to enjoy it in in a way that I haven't in a long time, certainly not since pandemonium. My whole approach has just been changed in a very, very positive way. And uh, I just had a wonderful night hike. Mm -hmm. And yeah, some weird stuff happened as as patrons heard. But uh, and anytime something weird happens, it freaks you out a little bit. But it wasn't the same kind of fear Mm -hmm. that that I had before. Brother Richard has just really, really in a very positive way, open my mind and sort of change my attitude Mm -hmm. towards what's going on. Well, I think when you find someone that is so both calm and um, definitive and unwavering, it really helps to reaffirm positive things as opposed to negative things. Yeah. That's what I really took from from brother Richard because he wasn't like if there wasn't a question that he was foiled by or no. that or that he didn't that somehow he didn't want to answer or wasn't able to approach well, the things about Celtic Christianity and saints and folk saints we had zero discussion on that beforehand and that can tell you the depth of his knowledge there was he did not know those yeah, you questions. didn't give him any kind of prep work like hey he, <laughs> he did not know those questions were coming yeah that was shocking to all. me when you would ask a question where I thought oh this is going to be where he says I bow out I don't really have any knowledge of this and he just went right into it so you can tell not just his uh, spiritual intellect but his uh, general intellect was yes. very apparent yes I, I, it's also um, you know, I think especially this time of year it's a it's a nice it's nice to view people who really are in a life of service and meaning yeah. Yeah. And who absolutely. really either live their faith or live their ideas. And it's more than just like this sort of football game that I think politics has become. Mm-hmm. My side versus your side. And it's it's kind of like, why not be on humanity's side? And that was, that was another thing I, I think I took from Brother Richard that. Um, I think it speaks to his approach as well that I don't think I got one fully negative comment about that episode Mm -hmm. he he just seemed so without judgment and i think that's what was really you know especially for people who don't have a like for me specifically who i don't have like a faith background Mm -hmm. um i think the thing that uh, always repels people without faith to faith-based discussions is the idea of that there's going to be this like horrendous judgment or there's going to be a, a point in time where your belief is or non-belief is belittled or right and i just don't get that um that feeling at all yeah i've met other people that way too that live their faith and and for whom proselytizing is not the the major point of their Right, yeah. Of their spiritual life. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if that's an incidental part and it brings someone to it, I think they're all the more happy for it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's the the primary goal. It's not like a punch card for souls. It's bringing to people in a really organic, natural way by showing them that this is a really nice way to live your life. Yeah. The comments uh, I got on Brother Richard were amazing people were very nice to me they said you know that that i did a good job interviewing him and so forth but it was really brother richard Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) i think he would shine no matter who was interviewing him and you just don't get that kind of window like i like in what other context am i ever going to know what a contemporary person of faith in ireland right thinks about or what their life is like he's just not going to have that experience otherwise that's the the kind of great thing about um the world today 
I got more than a few comments where people said this is perhaps the best paranormal podcast ever in regards to that and extremely flattering again that's all brother richard that's not me he's fantastic absolutely fantastic i was so happy that he came on for that episode well for 2020 more the same <laughs> <laughs> i think i missed maybe two weeks in 2019 i might have taken two weeks off but i did, did bonus you? episodes <laughs> I did bonus episodes both for patrons and I think for the main show sometimes. So I think averaging out, I probably did. Bare minimum, at least an episode a week. Yeah, I probably did a show a week. Well, more than that, if you include the patron episodes. Some months, patrons got three episodes. Some two. Most of the time, you know, one full episode. The big series that we have planned for 2020 and... I don't think there's any end to this series. So this isn't, you know, the Jenny Beam series, the Broken Circle, that was kind of a contained thing. Mm -hmm. We knew it would be three or four episodes and done. And there's only so much we could say, you know. Yeah, unless we've somehow magically solved that mystery. (laughs) Right. And and, I'm still hoping to, but I don't know if... Well, we were going to do a recap, which we will do. I have found some more research, but again, it just kind of keeps leading to dead ends. Yeah, and it's kind of, is it enough for a full episode even? Probably not. It's probably just something to mention, a few things. So we're going to have to do like a Broken Circle recap and maybe maybe tie it in with something else. But this sort of ongoing series that we're going to start in 2020, like I said, I don't know if there's going to be an end to it because we keep adding to it. We keep finding more stories. The working title is going to be The South Mountain Saga, I think. And it has to do with the South Mountain mountain chain that starts about at uh, White Rocks, where Chad and I were for a hike and where the first episode I did with Chad was. And it goes down through Michaud and then into Maryland. So does this sort of follow parts of the Appalachian Trail? The Appalachian Trail runs through the South Mountain chain, absolutely. Do you know what this becomes to the north and to the south? Like, what, is this a particular mountain range specifically? It is the South Mountain mountain oh, okay. range, and like I said, it it starts at White Rocks, basically White Rocks Trail, in um, starts in Cumberland County, goes a little bit through York County, into Michaud, in Adams right. Adams County and Franklin County, I guess, and then down into Frederick County, Maryland, and I think it ends around Burkittsville, Maryland, if, I, if I'm correct. Oh, isn't that where... Uh... That's where the Blair Witch was supposed <laughs> to have, have been filmed. And I believe the actual movie was actually filmed in another part of the South Mountains, though. Oh, really? I think so. I, I could be wrong about that. So that's the, the, the big sort of ongoing series that we have planned, and that's going to encompass everything from cryptids to ghosts to true crime stuff i bet there are some good civil war stories from that area too there are there there absolutely are we just keep finding stories really really interesting ghost stories and people keep bringing cryptid stories to us from the area we spent a lot of time out there chad and i have spent many many nights out there where we've had some really strange really interesting things happen so that's the, going to be the big series, I think, the big ongoing series that we will be doing. I'm sure there will be more, but that'll be the big preview. Other than that, it's going to be a lot more of the same, a lot more interviews. Keep bringing your stories to us. We love your stories. And a lot more on-site stuff. We'll be going back to Pandemonium at some point, and more of the same in 2020. So more I wanna... Interesting people, diverse walks of life, and... Yeah, hopefully we'll bring Brother Richard back. He said he'd come back. And I might do some traveling as well. I'd like to visit Texas and maybe visit the Northwest and record some shows in both those places. So we'll see. We'll see if we can make that happen in 2020. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Up next is Ingrid with her story of the strange gnome creature. Before we get to Ingrid, though, I do want to thank our patrons again. Thank you, patrons. You have made 2019 a wonderful year for us. 
With your support, we are able to make Strange Familiars and all the content that we provide. If you'd like to help us make Strange Familiars and get extra content, you can become a patron at Patreon, patreon.com slash strangefamiliars. $3 a month gets you those extra shows. We do at least one full extra episode of Strange Familiars every month for our patrons. Often we do more. In December, I did two. Some months, I've done as many as three. But we always do at least one. Patreon.com slash strangefamiliars. There's different levels of support there where you can get things like t-shirts, copies of my books, music CDs, artwork, and more. Go ahead and check it out. If you don't like the idea of a continuing subscription like Patreon and you want to help with a one-time donation, you can do that via PayPal. In the show notes under every episode at strangefamiliars.com, you can find a paypal.me link where you can make a one-time donation. Everyone can help by sharing the show on social media, by liking and subscribing on whatever podcatcher you're listening to us on, and by leaving us those nice five-star reviews. They help get the show in front of new potential listeners. Okay, we're talking with Ingrid from Norway. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good. And you have a very interesting story about a series of encounters with a gnome-like entity. Yes. So when did this start? Well, um, it started uh, several years ago because I used to work at um, an open-air museum, so a folk museum. Um, And in Norway, it's like, um, because we tried to save old buildings and farms uh, <clears throat> dating from 1100s and up until today. So we, we move entire farms and, and historical buildings from their original location to the museum. And mm-hmm. then we build them up again with their, you know, the way it used to look like. And uh, when I was working there, I um, on two or three occasions I met this uh, kind of confused gnome <laughs> or Tunkal as we call him in the region um, because you know he kind of belongs to the the farm and the, the farm had been moved. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> so um, I only saw him then and I just because it's, it's a lot about what you see but also a lot about what you you feel when you see him. So it's a bit complicated to explain, but confusion was a was a word there. Now he appeared confused. Yeah, no, just the the, the emotion that he gave me, because you know you kind of see him in this just in these uh, flashes, um, and then uh he's just projecting this confused energy that well or at least that was what he did in the um in the museum so uh i guess describe his appearance for us well he's um he doesn't have to be short but he could be a uh, short ish um i've seen him also like a full grown man and he's wearing a little bit like uh, gray-blue clothes, wool, because, you know, wool is the best. Like, it's comfortable and warm and handy, and you don't have to wash it all the time. (laughs) And uh, I've seen him both with the, so this kind of style from 1850, and I've seen him with a, a style that I can't really connect to any specific time period. But he's not, he's not in rags. He's like, he's properly dressed. Um, and he's, uh, he's also, you know, cl- quite clean. And I've seen him shaved. So he's, uh, you know, he's, he's like taking care of himself. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So um, you work at, at this folk museum. Yeah. And you see him there. Yeah. And then you moved to a, a very old farm yourself, didn't you? Yes. Uh, so uh, two years ago, I bought this uh, huge farm from, um, or the buildings as they stand today, they're from 
1850. But the, <clears throat> there's been a farm here since Viking Age. Wow. So the timber has been reused and it's, you know, <clears throat> so that the ground is, you know, very, I don't know what, it, what you would say in, in English, but uh, soaked with history. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, so I, um, it's, it's like a huge, it's one huge main building. It's about 450 square meters. Um, it's a very long, narrow building because that's the traditional building style. And then there's three barns and then there's something called the Stobbud, which is like the, the small house for drying grains and stuff. Uh, and then I was, um, because I'm a very handy person and I'm not afraid to work physically. So I was, you know, doing stuff around here, you know, carrying, I think I was carrying something heavy at the time, like some banks or some water, I'm not sure. But I was anyway moving across the, the, the farmyard and then I saw this little, or he wasn't little, but he appeared in the window like a size of a 10 year old maybe. Um, and I saw him in the window upstairs in the second floor of the main house looking down on me just like laughing, shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because, you know, I'm assuming because, you know, traditionally women wouldn't, you know, do that kind of physical labor. Okay. Yeah. I, I kind of, I didn't feel like he was mocking me. I just felt like he was, you know, you know, shaking his head because this farm has been, nobody has lived here for a while. So it's uh, since the 80s. So I don't know, it's like a little, I, I, he, he was just like, you know, in a way pleased that stuff was happening, that someone came back to take care of the farm. But he was also, you know, what is she doing? You know, doesn't she <laughs> have a man to do that for her? <laughs> <laughs> wow. And it, is this the same guy that you were seeing at the museum? No, 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 no. It's a different one. Okay. But, a, but the same type of entity, I yeah, guess. Yeah no doubt that it's the same kind of bit negative word but creature mm -hmm. uh, because you know they it's uh, what i think and that what what's what's said is that the tunkal is um the, the kind of the keeper of the farm it's uh, one of the the forefathers so in the viking age it would be a different name it would be haugkal which means the man on the, um, not pile, it's a bad word, so mound, the man on the grave mound. So oh, because okay. the, the forefathers were buried in mounds mm -hmm. at the farm or close to the farm. Um, so it's, it's someone that at some point lived here um, or a manifestation of the past people who lived here, in a way, if you understand. Yes, yeah. That's what I think, or that's what it's, a lot of people think. So he's kind of a caretaker and, and the, the spirit of the farm, in a way. And how many times did you see him then? I've seen him several times now, after living here for a couple of years. And he's kind of, so we've been restoring two of the barns, or actually three of them, but major uh, restaurants <laughs> of, of, of two and that's when he started um, you know showing up more often but just in this like weird uh, like he would um, I'm sitting in the living room and I just kind of see him you know looking in and waving and then he disappears so I think it's just gonna try to tell me that he's here and that he's, he's a bit confused but he's also happy that we're you know taking care of the farm and are, are you the only person who sees him? Yes, I am. And I, I know that it was my, my uh, fiancé that wrote you because, you know, I've seen stuff like this all my life. So to me, it's not really that, I would say it's special, but it's not that weird. And I told him about it and he freaks out. <laughs> <laughs> like, you have to talk to this guy. He has this podcast. <laughs> I'm like, what's the big deal? <laughs> No. Oh no no no! I love this stuff. This I 
there's uh especially when it ties to folklore like this it just i absolutely love it yeah but you know it's um and it and the christian my fiance he's he's a bit annoyed that he has to kind of drag this information out of me and i'm like <laughs> oh by the way um last week i saw the 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 tune call again and christian's like what why did he tell me <laughs> <laughs> that's funny my uh my father-in-law saw lights, what we call them, Will the Wisp lights. Um, I don't know if you have something similar. Uh, look like kind of orb, just orb lights that float in the, in the wilderness. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen those. Yeah. Uh, he saw them in a graveyard across from his house, and uh, I live. I don't know, maybe maybe eight, ten miles away from him, and he didn't tell me for months. And one day it just came up and I said, why would you not tell me? <laughs> that sounds like something Christian would say. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, he's under, under strict orders. If he sees them again, no matter what time of night it is, call me because I'm... Yeah, I'm I've, I've had the same strict message now. <laughs> but he's, Christian has seen me see him on two occasions. So like he's seen that. And I've been very, you know, but what? Because he can he can be so confusing. Um, once once I saw him quite because we were driving um, to this. Okay, let's say the nearest town. It's not really a town, but and and he was that had must have been like <clears throat> a couple of kilometers from here, and he was taking care of someone's cow. And we come driving up, and I um, I see him leaning over the cow the the cow was laying down it was actually three cows laying down in a row which is like you never see that mm -hmm. and, and he was leaning down he was stroking the cow and it was clear that the cow was in pain and he was taking care of the cow and and then i, I we drive past and i would say two meters from and i'm looking at him for several seconds and he he disappears so i'm almost off the road, you know, driving off the road. So Christian could clearly see that I was looking at something, but he just didn't understand what. <laughs> and I was like, that was him. <laughs> wow. Wow. So you said he can, he can vary in height. So does he, does he appear differently each time? No, not that. So they, they can vary in height, but the guy that's here, he's ha he has one height. Like, oh, it's just, consistent. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So he's he's a short short ish guy. Yeah. It's not scary at all when you see him just surprising. No, no, it's not scary. He's just um yeah, he's just a little uh tricky, like trickster ish because he he surprises me like I can go like um I, I get startled a little bit. Mhm. Mm but not it's not scary. Scary stuff, I don't like scary stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> I try to avoid the scary stuff. Does the, the one on your farm dress similarly to the one that you were seeing at the museum? No, it's different. He's differently dressed. The museum, the, the three different I saw in the museum had more like this kind of undefined uh, clothing style. So I'm really into historical clothes. So I know I can, I can if I see a jacket or a hat, I will know what, time period it's from from the region clothing history mm -hmm. and i couldn't like place it the their clothes it was a little bit like you know timeless but the the one that's here he's wearing this typical 1800s outfit <laughs> can you describe it or is there anything that stands out about it mm, well it's, it's a little bit more tailored so it's a um, and the, 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 the quality of the fabric is just better. Um, so it's this, uh, felted wool. I'm not going to go all textile nerdy on you, but <laughs> uh, it's, it's this, uh, very pleasant, earthy gray blue color and it's, uh, felted. Um, it has buttons on the front and he has a, not a sixpence, but it kind of looks a little bit like a sixpence. Yeah, and it is, you know, it's a fairly tight jeans, but not, you know, <laughs> Alice Cooper, but <laughs> right. more, more fitted clothes. Would it be workwear from, from the time, you know, yeah, from the 1800s? 
typical working class um, workwear, but still with a little twist, like it's something magical about it. Wow. Has this, you know, his own style in a way. Does his face look human or does he, do the features look different? Well, it's, it's not, you know, he's a bit, he's a bit shadowy, but when the, the, the incident with the cow, I got a, he wasn't that blurry. So I got a better look and he had actually quite, you know, handsome features like, a, like a young man. So that was uh, like, he was shaved and it was quite interesting. He didn't look like ancient. Right. So, you know, yeah. So it's very interesting that he's appearing as you're, you know, doing uh, all the work on the farm Mm -hmm. because we get so many ghost stories when people are, you know, fixing up their houses. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It seems to be a big time when, when there's change. But I found it interesting that you said, at least the feeling you're getting is that he's not upset at the changes. No, because I, you know, uh, I, I'm a big believer in this, um, like good intentions. You know, if, if our intentions are good, he's going to pick up on that. Mm-hmm. So we're not going to, you know, we're not re- redecorating to sell it or, you know, to make money or do something, you know, I don't know, create a, <laughs> As something that's you know bad, we we just we just want to make it nice and to contribute to the the local community. And I think maybe you know he picks up on that. So, or I'm hoping it's. But you know when I started telling Christian about that, you know I've seen him more around lately. Christian goes like, oh, we have to bring him stuff, and you know he goes out into the the barn with like a beer, mm-hmm. and porridge, and you know he, you know he tries to you know bribe him, spoil him. I don't know. what. <laughs> I'm like, we don't have to do that, you know? <laughs> but he's just like, yeah, well, you know, we need to show him that, you know, he's welcome. And I don't, he's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but we did, you know, it's interesting you say about the, the ghost as well, because we have one upstairs in the, in the far end of the corridor. And, and it's, uh, it's so weird. I have that on video. Because it, uh, it's about two weeks ago. You know, have you seen, uh, have you seen flashing lights? You mean uh, supernatural flashing lights? Yeah, like strong, like flashing lights. They go uh, like just poof, And then, so like for less than a second. And then it goes dark. And then it goes flashing again. No, I've, I've, I've not seen that. I've seen uh, other, other weird lights in the woods, but I've, I've, uh, people have described exactly what you're telling, talking about to yeah. me. So bright, bright white light, almost like uh, from a light bulb. Mm-hmm. And that we have it on film and that's the weirdest thing. You know, we have that on film and then it's really no point in showing that to people, you know, because they're not going to believe you anyway, even though we have it on film. So we haven't shown it to anyone, but still, it's uh, our tenant. Uh, is a very nice man from Slovakia. He's uh, totally so. What would you say? Agnostic, atheist, mm-hmm. uh, normal person. <laughs> he was going to bed at night and just with these flashing lights up in the hallway, and he just started filming, and. Uh, that was uh, weird, and uh, so uh, I think that this because this this ghost upstairs is uh, so it's not the same thing. It's not the tune call. Okay. And I'm not even sure if it's a ghost, but it's something, and uh, it's it's freaked me out a couple of times. So I don't want to be in that room up there because it's uh, yeah. But that's a different story. But I'm interested in that one as well. So. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it you get less of a good feeling from this, where it's just. It's, a, it's a, like a horrible uh, thing. So uh, actually, Christian called a, a friend that's good with that stuff because I don't want to have I don't want to deal with that stuff at all. So uh, there's someone coming to take care of it. I think. Oh wow! Yeah, because I just uh, it's a uh, because I, I was I was sleeping in that room at some point uh, while living here. So it's a really nice room, <laughs> and I was you know just staying there for a few nights and. Uh, we have a seven bedrooms, so you know 
there is a lot to choose between. And then um, I was uh, so I, I what I what I call it is a is a mare. So it's not a horse, but a mod. Okay. I don't know what it is in English. So in the region, we would have a word that's if you have a nightmare. So mm -hmm. it's a mare. Okay. You know okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, we have uh, the, the, in uh, the Pennsylvania Dutch, we, we, we uh, it's a trotter head. We call it uh, like trotter. the tread okay. o to tread on your on your head, basically. It, you know. Okay, because in the region it's moderate. So when you have a nightmare, you have a moderate, and that means you're riding the mare. Okay, so it's a very similar idea. But it's not a horse. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so this, um, and I was, uh, I went to bed that night with uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of negative emotions because I was so f pissed off at someone. And then um, the 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 mayor came and uh, uh, showed himself. He's been, uh, I've seen him before as well when I was younger, living somewhere else. And um, you know, they, they basically try to strangle you. Uh, and that was super uncomfortable and just, you know, staring, standing besides the bed, staring and then strangling, sitting on you at the same time in a way. Yes. People have described very, very similar. Um, yeah. this, do, do you get a good look at this or is it just kind of a, a black shadowy figure? It's, it's a, it's a black gray shadowy figure, but I can, I could see uh, long hair. I couldn't see really if it was a man or a woman, but uh, since I since I'm <laughs> since I'm a woman with a mom born in the seventies, I'm assuming that all bad energy come from men. So, <laughs> 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 no, no, my mom is not born in the seventies. She was an activist in the seventies. Sorry, but anyway, so uh, <laughs> it's just I got a male energy, but I'm not sure it could be anything. It's just um, right. long long hair. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, this this is really interesting because this is, I mean, this for sure is uh, culturally transcending, you know, so so I get stories of this very, very similar things from all oh. over. Yeah, okay. Well, that's interesting. Because yeah. this is also one of the things that I just didn't, you know, mention to Christian. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. Because he wasn't living here at the time, so, but... Yeah, so that I, I avoid that room, and I might, I might, you know, think that these lights were connected to that the mayor in some way. Right. Um, yeah, and uh, really don't like that room, and other people that has slept in that that room as well. You know, guests. We didn't tell them about the the this, and they they've had the same experience in that room. Mm. Like someone's looking at me and one guy even got up to check in the closet because he was so sure that there was someone there. Wow. Like a grown, grown man that, you know, uh, yeah. So, um, uncomfortable creature. That yeah. one. Yeah. Were you aware of, so the, the I'm not going to try to pronounce it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe you can give me a lesson on pronouncing it. The gnome, the gnome fellow. The, the gnome, the tunkal. Tunkal. Yeah, good. Was, was it close? <laughs> was that close? Yeah, it was close. Was good. Okay. All right. uh, were you aware of the folklore surrounding that before you saw him? No, no. Um, or we kind of have, you know, um, Norway or Norwegians, we grow up with, stories uh because we're at least my family uh i grew up in a rural district and you know it's, it's it's i spent a lot of time in the forest when i was growing up so you kind of hear stories uh but never like they're dis they're not really described in the way that i saw him more like small traditional santas so mm -hmm more the you know the robe and the the white beard and the a little bit more not coca-cola santa but you know more christmasy <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and then we have stories about you know that he he's a bit that he did stuff like he would uh, pull the cat's tail if you didn't put porridge out or he would let the horses loose if you didn't behave and but then we also have stories that he he saved 
human lives, you know, because, you know, a farmer was snowed in and uh, he couldn't get firewood. And then the, the Tuncal would bring him firewood to keep him warm through the winter. And, you know, so there's, there's, but I didn't really hear about the detailed stories until I started working at the Folk Museum because I was a, um, so I was the program manager. So I had the, you know, the, all the scripts for the guides and, you know, had to go into detail for all the, the folklore. So that kind of made the picture more complete in a way. Was that an okay answer? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So at the time you first saw him, either, either at the museum or, or at your place, mm-hmm. did it take a few times before you realized, oh, this is the Tunko? No, not really. I'm just... It was, I understood uh, right away because he has a different energy. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have like ghost energy or evil, evil things energy. Right, right. He's a a kind energy, like a caring one. Wow. And he's like super quick. He's like, you know, like when he, when he appeared in the window with the, the, the waving, it was like a split second. It was really fast. And when you, say, when you say he disappeared, do like literally just disappears into thin air or he just moves quickly? No, he, like, he ducked down. Oh, wow. And then just no more. Like a, like a prankster, you know, like something oh, like wow. a kid. <laughs> but I know it wasn't my kid because he was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, I, I'm I, very, very interested. I'm wondering if we have, a, you know, an equivalent here. Um, we get a really interesting mix of the folklore that the Germans brought with them. And then you kind of mixed in with some, you know, people who moved from, from the UK, some of their folklore and then some local stuff and, and so forth. But uh, I don't know if we have something similar. We have little people, but they're not associated with, you know, particular farms or particular tracts of land and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've been to America a couple of times and, you're quite uh, fairies seems to be like a thing. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I mean, they, that's, there's pockets of it. There's pockets of it. It's very popular here, but uh, mm-hmm. tr- traditionally there's, there's only really pockets of it. We, there's an area in the County I live in where uh, a lot of people from Wales moved and yeah. there's, yeah. Some, there's some of that uh, that they brought with them. Uh, Welsh people have a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And in fact, I'm surprised there's not more of it there because the the, the actual language survives there. They still speak Welsh in this oh, part of the county, which is very very unusual. But uh, no, you know, it, I don't know. It's it's like um, the, the, I think that it's you know the even though some buildings might be newer and you know settlements might be newer, I think that you know nature was always there. So why shouldn't the creatures have been there always. Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like where, it's where we live. So the farm is located in a valley. So there's two ridges. So one ridge on each side. And then there's a lake. And then there's the fjord. And we have neighbors, but they're not close. So I'm imagining, and this is, has been the situation for most regions. So Norway is... Still, we don't still don't have big cities, or you know, they're big for us, but internationally they're really tiny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Norway has been um, kind of shapes the mentality of the people as well. You know, living far from other people, you have to travel a long way to meet your family, friends, neighbor. You have to travel to church. There's like a lot of things that are you're kind of isolated. And I think that when you live in isolation like this and you live in so close to nature, things become a lot more visible. And then if mysteries happen, like somebody let the horses out in the middle of the night or, wow, shit, I suddenly have firewood, even though I'm snowed in, you, you just get it. Like there's someone here helping out or not helping out. Right, whatever the case may be. You can't be the neighbor, you know, because he's like, five kilometers away are you that isolated oh not not now mm-hmm. now it's like a kilometer to the neighbor or i don't know 800 yeah. meters but yeah 
fairly isolated though. But that's you there's a new house, like it was built in two thousand and twelve. So mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Can I ask you about the lights that you saw? That the, like I said, we call them will the wisps, the, the orb lights. Yeah, that yeah, that's that's several years ago though, and it, that was in Denmark. But yeah, you can. <laughs> was it uh, in the woods or where did it you see them? On a, on a beach. So yeah, there was some woods there. So it was a, a narrow beach and uh, leaf trees. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then it was uh, about uh, four of them. And they were, so I would describe them as, do you know this, these glass balls that jugglers use, you know, to do tricks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, And they were dark green, bluish and floating and uh, very unpleasant. And they started kind of surrounding me and my ex-boyfriend who also saw everything and he's like totally atheist. So for him, it was, he was so scared. He ran away actually. Wow. <laughs> well, I ran too, cause it was really uncomfortable, but they kind of uh, started surrounding us. Mm, I don't know if I would say pushing, but trying to lead us towards the sea. It was quite wavy. And wow. uh, really freaked me out. Yeah. Or it was for several seconds. How close were you to them? Five, a meter. Oh boy! Wow. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and and we've talked about it. So my ex boyfriend a lot because um, he just like, what could that have been? And you know, I, I've never been in a um, like paranormal paranormal community. I don't know what you call it. Mm-hmm. I've had no people to talk to at all and and if you tell people you know they're like they don't believe you um so having him there experiencing the same was like good because i didn't feel insane right um, right <laughs> so it's re- it's only after i met christian that you know um he's been helping me name stuff oh, but that has to be this and you know i've also had a lot of the uh, sleep paralysis oh yeah recently learned that that's what it's called <laughs> yes yeah, so i i uh i'm i do not like that at all no it's it's also very very horrible um like you're like you're drunk and there's a zombie apocalypse and you can't do anything <laughs> right <laughs> yeah do so, you, so, sorry do you see things when you you have the sleep paralysis oh uh, no it's more um it's more a phys- very physical feeling. Mm. So it's uh, I I don't see things. I just experience. Um, I'm. It's often that I'm in a in in my. So I wouldn't call it a dream because I'm not really sleeping. But in the I'm in a situation where something horrible has happened. So I wasn't really kidding about the zombie apocalypse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's, it could be something like that, or it could be something like um, me and my son were trapped in a snowstorm, and I can't, you know, we're naked, and we're hungry, and we can't go anywhere, uh, and I can't do anything, because I'm just just paralyzed. I don't have any, um, my body is just like a lump of bones, in a way, and I just can't speak properly i can't do anything and it's just so i'm, I'm like helpless lost in this uh, marsh <laughs> yeah. right yeah do, do you see things that's why you're asking oh yeah oh yeah 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 that's what mine were associated with uh i i don't think they were space people but what people call alien abduction mine mine wow. associated <laughs> with that. yeah it was very unpleasant very very unpleasant okay uh, so you- Maybe maybe it's memories that, huh? In what sense? No, oh, maybe you're remembering uh, something that happened to you. Oh, it's quite possible. It's it's quite possible because uh, I've always said I n- I never left my bed when these things happened. You know, yeah, me neither. No. And and uh, but I would get the sense of you know different different things. Um, 
most, I barely saw things and I can remember most often I would wake up and just sense something was there and that was almost worse. Yeah, but, but I do that. I do that too. It's, I, I think I'm having it because of the, the mare that we talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what kind of what I like. I, if it was me, I would probably think that, you know what I mean? Because just yeah. because of my other associations with this stuff. Yeah, I think it's I think it's the the the, the smear so it's kind of like a demon. I don't like the word demon because it's so connected to Christianity, but you get what I mean. Yeah, um, it's that's kind of doing it to me, like really giving me a, a bad nightmare where I can't wake up because right. that's what it feels like. I can't. I know that I'm not sleeping. I just can't open my eyes and get up. Someone yeah. has to physically pull me up. Yeah, it's just, you're you're kind of stuck in the that in between state, which is mm-hmm. it's yeah, it's, there's nothing fun about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we kind of derailed a bit now, but that's, yes, uh, yes, I guess that's fine. I don't know how you do how, how you do your episode. Yeah. Oh, I just, you know, whatever. I don't prepare questions. I just figure I go in as a listener and I can ask whatever seems <laughs> fit. Well, I'm an open book for you. All right. Well, I have <laughs> to ask this because Christian. I'm obsessed with, with wild men from all over the world. Do you have a folkloric wild man there? Uh, a folklore what? A folkloric wild man. Uh, you know, some guy uh, like we would call Bigfoot here or... You know, something like no, that. No, we don't. Uh, we don't have that. So a Yeti, Bigfoot kind of thing. Yeah. No, we don't. We just have a lot of moose. <laughs> <laughs> like in our garden every day, <laughs> which is more than enough. Uh, no, we don't. We don't have that. We do have the. We do have a woman though. Um, um, so she's a Hulder. I don't know if you heard about her. She's well, a, Beautiful, beautiful woman with a with a cow's tail. Oh, the cow's tail? No, I'm I'm not familiar. You're not? Okay. No. Christian says that I am one. <laughs> 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 Compliment to myself there. Anyway, no. Uh, so she's the uh, she's she lives in the mountain, so inside it, and there's a secret door, of course, and uh, and she she uh, she she calls men. So she she lures you and then she takes you deep into the forest into the marshlands and she will trick you into coming into the mountain where you will stay forever because you oh. think you're gonna marry her and sleep with her and you know she's so beautiful right she's really like really ugly she's a shapeshifter mm-hmm. uh woodwives i believe are the equivalent in uh german folklore and i'm not sure what the, the name the german name is but uh, the translation was woodwives uh i had someone on from sweden and he talked about the skogstra i believe he called and uh a very similar thing didn't mention the cow tail but uh i i believe this woman again is a very beautiful woman or could at least trans appear as one Mm-hmm. And uh, she, when she turned around, uh, she had a hollow back that looked like a hollow tree. So she would disappear into the woods. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it might be. It's it's surprising uh, with Sweden and Norway is that you know it's we have a lot of similarities, but also a lot of different uh, folklore depending on where in the country it is. Because down down south in Sweden, it's it's just way warmer and flatter. So that, that would inspire different folklore, I guess. Mm, yeah, I would think you're right. So as part of your job at the museum, do you, do you uh, I know you, you know you said it's a folk museum, but is, is the folklore part of the, the story there as well as the, you know, as well as preserving the buildings and so forth? Yeah, it, it was. I, I, don't, I don't work there anymore, uh, but I, I did for five years. And then it's something that we tried to incorporate because there is really, uh, it's, there's no way of getting around it because you have to mention it because there was so much superstition. It ruled everyday life. And this is super fascinating. So, and I did a, I did a, a, a tour on, so uh, a guided tour focusing on only rituals connected to death. Oh, wow. 
is just there's so much um so the just to give you like a quick example of how this superstition directly influenced how people would you know uh, set up their house is uh, so we have that too in our farm. So there's like a living room that you use for everyday activities. And then there's like the, the nice living room that you open only every once in a while. <laughs> okay. um, so in this nice living room, that's where the, the dead would be, um, cleaned and, you know, um, there's there's a bunch of things connected to the cleaning and they would be prepared for for their grave tying the toe tying the toes together putting needles under the feet like a lot of that stuff and then in the the wall up under the roof um they would make a hole in the wall so these are thick timber logs that they would have to cut through to make a square hole big enough to get the body out of the hole. Wow. And because the person, the dead person, couldn't be carried out the front door in the normal way because then he or she might find her way back in. Oh, okay. So it was a matter of, like, confusing them. Right. It's really neat to see, like, a lot of these old timber buildings have this, like, weird... (laughs) hole <laughs> in the top yeah, so, yeah. I, I think we have a similar thing i uh sometimes they said they would take uh people out through the window yeah that could that could they could do that too or they could just like turn all the furniture upside down and move everything around so that the dead person wouldn't recognize themselves oh that's interesting too that's kind of uh like the idea um if you're uh, pixie led or, or you know, sup, you know, supernaturally lost, you turn okay. your clothes inside out. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah it's very, I very, very interesting. No, but so, so it's, it's a, um, it's, it's quite hard to explain Norwegian uh, cultural history without mentioning that these the creatures and the supernatural supernatural stuff because it's um just so intertwined and like it ruled people's everyday life. Well, I think, you know, the way I like to say it is I think that folklore connects us to the earth where we are. And, Mm -hmm. and I always advise people, you know, people often say like, well, how do you find so much of this, this stuff? And I said, well, just, it starts with folklore. It starts with your local folklore. And, and even if you're not originally from there, if you're living there now, I say like, you need to learn, learn the stories because they're going to tell you about the land. Because I think people were intimately connected with the land. I mean, if you're a farmer and, and your crops go bad, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's a bad thing back then, you know? Yeah, it was the worst thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, yeah, and the, the old Norse gods as well. There's, there's a God for everything. Mm-hmm. We yeah. even have a god for skiing. Oh yeah, that went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, the 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 old Norse gods are just you know there's there's pretty much a god for everything and and you needed that because you needed to be as specific as possible when you asked for something. I think. Yeah. There's, so so in, in the same in, in folklore, there's there's pretty much like a rule for for everything making stuff up now but you know don't eat eat apples on a saturday because that will kill the horse you know it's just so many things because at one point somebody ate an apple on a saturday and the horse died and then we're like what the fuck could that be you know let's not do that again (laughs) right yeah but sometimes it's actual real you know, good knowledge. Sometimes it is, you know, this, this plant's going to help heal you, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I'm not, I'm not talking about the, you know, the herbal stuff and the things that, you know, are actually happening, but it's, um, it's also a lot of this, uh, this superstition, which is, I think it's nice because, you know, um, I think a lot of it is true. So, yeah, I, I often say there's a reason why things become traditional. And, you know, yeah. there's, 
there's a usually a at least some form of truth to it. And, and you know, isn't it isn't it really just nice that that we do have uh, someone watching over the farm? You know, I've I've heard s- several stories, modern, from people who, you know, they, their house could have burned down, but someone pulled that plug out in the middle of the night right. after the refrigerator refrigerator that's a hard word started burning, and right. nobody home but still someone has pulled the plug out so someone with good intentions is keeping an eye on our farm as well which is cool yeah absolutely absolutely keep that going <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh it's, it's uh yeah i absolutely love it. I, I love the story absolutely love it i could sit here and keep you all night asking you questions about norwegian folklore uh, <laughs> Because I am fascinated about folklore all over the world, and I, I love the the commonalities and the differences. And you know, obviously, when you when you say, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah," we have something like that here. I yeah. get very excited about that when I, when I can start to draw these little lines. And uh, of course, you know, back in the ancient world, I'm sure this stuff traveled by word word of mouth. So that's why mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of the same. But uh, it's just absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much for sharing your stories. Yeah, no, it was, it was a pleasure. I'm, uh, I'm uh, looking forward to, to listening and <laughs> to all the stuff I said. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thanks for listening, everybody. Before we go, I'd like to thank Sheree M., Aaron D., and Adam P. for your PayPal donations. Thank you so much. Such a big help. Also, we want to thank Aaron and Michael for the scarves they sent us. Which I'm wearing now because I basically wear a blanket on my head from late October through April, so I'm already wearing it. It's, it's <laughs> I'll awesome. wear it in the house. It's awesome. I mean, these scarves are awesome, aren't they? Yeah, they really they're, they're are nice. super comfortable wolf scarves. Cashmere, right? Yeah. Lovely. Nice. Lovely. Thank you, Aaron and Michael. We absolutely love the scarves, and we will wear them. I am wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else... Thank you for 2019. Hey, you already, and you also got some um, ornaments and other things from. Um, oh yeah, listeners have been just wonderful. Really sweet. Yeah. Unexpected, very thoughtful. Yeah, Tina gift. sent sent ornaments, and I'm, I almost hesitate to list stuff because I know I'm going to forget somebody. Oh yeah, and Johnny um, made a really cool Christmas card, and like, yeah, they're just. Yeah, it's it's plus a, a Fiddler's Green always sends like this amazing pamphlet that they do every year. The Christmas uh, number. It was a wonderful uh, publication. I, I have not had the opportunity to do artwork for it because I've been working on the book with Josh. So yeah, that, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody. We listeners have been super nice to us. So thank you, everybody. I really feel like Strange Familiars is just a big extended family. I'm super lucky to be able to do what I do. So from our family here at Strange Familiars. <laughs> from our daughter who's taken over pin making detail to um, our son who hopefully will do some overdubs for an upcoming episode to... Yeah, I'd, I'd love to get him to do some voice work. He's, his, my son's got a deeper voice than me. <laughs> he really does. Kills me. His hair is getting... <laughs> Close to the same length, too. Yeah, you got nothing left. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the youth. <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way. And can we please get you to do a separate ASMR channel for the future? I think there's been a call for there's that. There's been I'm a off. lot of call for ASMR. Here's the thing. I don't have ASMR. Now, I believe it works for this reason. You told me about it before there was even a name for ASMR. Yeah. Years and years ago, mm-hmm. you told me about this funny feeling, <laughs> as you called it, and I had no clue what you were talking about, and I still don't. Uh-huh. But then it became like a phenomenon. Yes, now it's huge. Like I, I hear. Yeah, all I, about I, I had, the first time I had joined Facebook, there was a um, a group, and there was less than five hundred people in it, and it was called like the Unnamed Feeling or something like that. And I remember the first time that a YouTube video had ASMR in the title because before that everybody was watching um, these like hypnosis videos and like massage technique videos and Mm -hmm. and, um, sort of proto unboxing videos. And I used to like really, I really liked like makeup tutorial videos and I don't (laughs) really wear makeup. (laughs) 
<laughs> which seemed odd to people. <laughs> QVC. And... So I, I will do ASMR, but I need direction. I need to know what to just do. Just talk. Just be slow. Just talk. Talk and be slow. <laughs> so yeah, people have uh, have requested that I do some of that. We'll see. I am going to do audio books, though. I'm going to do audio versions of my books. And our other podcast, hopefully, we will have a new episode of that, maybe as the patron episode for January, hopefully, or one of them. Yeah, yeah, because we're going to do, we're going to get a few episodes in the can before we release any of The Long Forgotten Friend, and then we'll go from there. I mean, there might be other podcast news besides that. We'll see. Really? <laughs> Depends on us. Unnamed somebody. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> from Texas. <laughs> well, thanks again, everybody. We'll be back soon with more Strange Familiars. Strange Familiars is a production of Dark Holler Arts, music, books, art, podcasts, and more. DarkHollerArts.com. Intro and background music is by Stone Breath. StoneBreath.BandCamp.com for more. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash strangefamiliars. You can also join the Strange Familiars gathering group there. And we're on Instagram, at strangefamiliars. Hi, Timothy. Stephen. I had what I believe is possibly a time alteration slash UFO approach that did not fully complete because I did not want it to happen. I was actually asking, like, uh, mentally, like, no, 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 this is not happening. So in Midwest America here in uh, Illinois, I went to a forest with about five of my friends, and the biggest takeaway from that night was one of my friends telling me, what's that over there? And I looked out into this, it's not heavily forested, the area that we were in, but uh, it looked like a giant light was shining on us. It really looked like uh, a pyramid with the top cut off. And like it was about to land from what it looked like uh when the experience happened. There is a small river where it happened at, uh the North Branch Chicago River. And um it looked like it was a much larger space at the time at night. Uh I did go visit back during the day and it looked significantly different from what I remember. But it looked like something similar to like a square hotel that was more like, a, it almost looked like a triangle with the top cut off. And it looked like it was descending down onto the other side of the river. And I was saying in my head, no, 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 this is not happening, this is not happening. And for some reason or another, it seemed to have not descended completely and went back up in the air and went over our heads. And we saw it all descending. We all saw it pass over our heads. And uh, it looked like it had changed shape, but uh, carried off into the distance more of an elongated form of a ship. But, yeah, but I just wanted to send the story over to you. Hopefully uh, you can do something with sharing this, but this is my only experience. And it's here in uh, Midwest Illinois. So, hope everything's well. Hope to talk to you soon, Tim. Oh,
shine all upon you. And the wind speaks through the leaves. And the trees speak to me. And you sing their song. Stretch over me Shadows long.